praise God. What an amazing Sunday this is. Let me first say happy Sunday to you and your entire family. I'm so glad you're here with us again today. Listen, I've been praying for you all week, praying God's blessings, praying God's choice favor upon you, your family, your friends, that God would just bless you richly. Listen, today is going to be a powerful, powerful day. I sense God ready to move like never before. But I want you to do me a few favors before we go into the worship experience. I want you to, of course, as always, hit that share button. That is so vital. That is so important. Just take a second, hit that share button and help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ literally around the world. Secondly, call all the people in your house, family, friends, put them around the biggest screen or the largest device so that they can really interact uh, and feel this virtual worship experience. Now we're getting ready to go into our praise and worship period and it's going to prepare our hearts for where God is going to take us this day. And immediately after that, I'm going to be right back here with the word of God just for you. We give him glory that is due unto him. He is worthy of every praise that we have. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you need the glory of the Lord? to saturate you right where you are. Hallelujah. So I will do anything to be in his presence. I will do anything just to be where he is. Hallelujah. Lift your hands in your sanctuary. And Psalms tells us to bless the Lord. He's worthy, yes he is worthy of that praise right there. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. Because we love you, Lord. Here's what my heart is crying. Lord, if I find favor in
how we do honor him on this day. Listen, I want you to get your Bible. We're going to the word of the Lord. I want to call your attention to the book of Acts chapter number five, the book of Acts chapter five. And I want to begin our reading at verse 17 of Acts chapter five. Hear the beginning of the reading of the word of God. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go. Stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and, and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all the safety and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man wherein. Now when the high priests and the captains of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Can you shout amen? Now, I'm fascinated with verse number 20. Um, well, in verse 19, the angel of the Lord comes by night, opens up the prison doors and brought them forth and said unto them, Go. Stand and speak in the temple to the people all the wor words of this life. At my assignment is to preach four words to you today, and those words are get back out there. Would you ought to lay your hands on yourself and say, I've got to get back out there. There are some experiences, ladies and gentlemen, that have left all of us, if we were honest with each other, they have left us a little shell-shocked. There have been experiences, perhaps too many to recall, that have left us so devastated that we ditched the notion of ever, ever daring to attempt that again. That is just how negatively impacted our faith and our emotions were. Uh, it is this phobia of repeated outcomes. Uh, it is a result of how pessimistic failure makes you feel. 
somebody watching me now who is in this place as I'm speaking, um, that it's very hard for you to gain any degree of optimism because you look to be in a cycle of just repeated outcomes. One relationship has failed and you've given up on your desire to have one again. You have literally taken yourself out of the market because one thing went wrong. One endeavor you attempted, you attempted didn't turn out the way you had hoped and you concluded that I might as well quit. I might as well surrender the idea. The problem with that is that most people quite often prematurely sideline themselves, take themselves out of living behind one moment, behind one person, behind one lost job, behind uh, one failed relationship. And the Lord sent me here today to tell you to get back out there. It is critical for you, it is critical for your well-being, it is critical for your sanity, uh, for you to understand that you have quite a great deal more living left to do. Uh, just because you took a hit, just because it was more devastating than you, you thought you were able to process, does not mean your life is over. You gotta decide, I've gotta get back out there. And when I ran across this uh, fifth chapter of the book of Acts, it was quite remarkable to me as I began to see this uproar in Acts chapter 5. There is quite a significant uproar. And at the center of this uproar is the apostle Peter and some of the fellow apostles who are with him. And they have decided very intentionally to go against uh, being well advised by the high priests and those who were awfully religious, they advised them that they should not ever preach or teach in the name of Jesus ever again. In fact, they warned them not to spread this, this Jesus doctrine through Jerusalem. And uh, of course, they decided to do it anyway and uh, it created quite an uproar to the point that the Bible says that God used the hands of the apostles uh, to work miracles and to perform wonders. Now, now it's, it's interesting because there are a whole lot of people who say, God, I want you to use me and I want to be used for your glory and I want you to use my hands but, but it is actually at the point where you tell God to use your hands that sometimes things seem to get out of hand. Um, God talks to the apostle Peter and uh, he tells them to perform these miracles and wonders in Jerusalem. But what is interesting that when God decides to use your hands, it's going to draw some attention that you do not necessarily want. Um, and not only will it draw attention that you do not necessarily want, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to draw attacks that are unbelievable because there are always going to be uh, this sect of people who observe what God is doing through your hands and uh, they say, well, I could do it better than that. That They're looking at your hands trying to figure out what's so differently about your hands than mine that God bypassed me in order to use you. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, uh, there are some anointings that are on people's lives that even though you marvel at it, even though you, uh, you look at it in amazement, there are some anointings that everybody just can't handle. That's why you gotta be careful saying, I want that anointing. You just don't understand the weight of the anointing that is in the hands of the person who is carrying it and the Bible says that um, he got they got so much attention until it gets back to the Sadducees and the high priests and all of the religious circle and they hear that Peter and the apostles are preaching the gospel of Jesus not only are they preaching but now the traffic in Jerusalem is all messed up because the Bible says that there are beds and couches that are lined all through 
through the streets of Jerusalem and the apostles are healing the sick, the blind are receiving their sight, and the Bible says every one of them recovered. Let me pause for a moment because I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He said to look at you who are watching me today and tell you to get ready. There's an anointing being released for a mass recovery of everything in your life. Let me say that to you again. There is an anointing right now that is coming to you. God says, tell you, you are about to recover quicker than anyone else expected. In fact, you're about to recover from some loss, from some sickness, from some debilitating event, even quicker than you thought you would. Can you take about 30 seconds and praise God for your own recovery? The reason that's important is because whether you know it or not, everybody is not going to be happy for your recovery they really hope you stay down for another six months or another year but I want to tell you that God's getting ready to raise you up and God's getting ready to bless you like he's never blessed you before but the Lord says to tell you I am getting ready to cause you to recover everything that you lost in an inconvenient season. And, and so the word is spreading and word is getting back to the high priest and says, you gotta come see this, Peter is out there. Didn't you tell them not to preach in the name of Jesus? Didn't you give them strict instruction that they're not to be performing miracles, no signs or wonders were to be exhibited in Jerusalem? And the word gets back to the high priest and the high priest sends his offer is down there and the Bible says that they laid hands on the apostles they arrested them and put them in a common prison now I, I want to talk to somebody uh, and tell you that uh, you got to be careful at this season of your life particularly when God has been building your esteem and your worth and God has been really ministering in your spirit about your worth and about your value you have to be careful because when God starts using your hand the people who don't like the fact that he's using you will try to treat you commonly in order to convince you that you are nothing special uh, uh, some, sometimes you have to be careful because whenever you start exhibiting too much confidence, there's always going to be some people who don't like the fact that you're now out of your shell and you have now shared that shyness. Now you're coming into your own. You are now ready for front and center stage and yet they will try to pull you down and treat you as if you were common. But I want to talk to somebody and tell you you are far from common. You ought to come close as you can to me today because I want to tell you that you are exceptional, that you have exceptional gifting and skill and talent and anointing in your life. That, that's why you have to separate yourself from anybody, watch this, who cannot handle the evolved you. That there are people who enjoyed you as long as you were the average you, the mediocre you, the one who didn't really want much, who didn't want anything more, who didn't exhibit any effort. But people tend to have a problem once you start evolving, once your life gets some traction, once you start making some headway. But I want to tell you, you have come too far in the process now to let people put you in some common box and treat you like you are common. I don't know about you, but I've learned how to get up and walk away from tables with people who thought they were going to treat me like I was somebody common. You don't know all the hell I've been through. And just because you look like you look now doesn't mean that's the way you've always looked. I need somebody to praise God who's been through some stuff in your life, but you made up your mind. I am not common. But in fact, the past has shown me that anybody who's gone through something like I've gone through and still survived it, it means I I am anything but common I am absolutely exceptional and sometimes people will try to convince you that you are nothing special at, by trying to put you in common places and talking to you commonly and 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 trying to treat you commonly and the Bible says that they put them in a common prison but the angel of the Lord by night opened up the prison doors 
and brought them out. Let me just prophesy right through here because I want to tell you if you can really handle this today that by the time night falls, you're going to be out of this. Oh my God. There, uh, there's somebody shouting right now. I don't know what city you're in, what state you're in, but the Lord says to tell you by the time night falls that you are going to be absolutely out of that. God's creating an opening for you. God's getting ready to create an opening for you that five minutes before I said it to you, your mind could not even process it. It could not even conceive. You thought everything was locked down and you were shut out of the opportunity but I want to tell you about a God that specializes in the opening of doors see what the enemy was counting on is that the locked door would be enough leverage for you to lose your faith he thinks that the locked door that you're looking at would be enough leverage to make you lose interest in the pursuit of your passion but what I love about God that God has the power to open up every door door that has been closed in your life. I'm talking to somebody now who's been looking at a locked door. Looks like the economy has been locked for you personally. Look like the opportunities have been locked up for you personally. But I want to tell you about the angels of the Lord are on an assignment to release you from the confinement of common places. That's your cue to shout right now because the angel of the Lord has already been dispatched to deliver you out of that common place the devil really thought he was going to have you but the, the word of the Lord is that the common place could never contain you you would never be satisfied living within that kind of system you would never be comfortable living the rest of your life knowing that there was something exceptional in you but get satisfied going to sleep in a common house in a common place the rest of your life God's getting ready to release you from that common place but watch this you have to have uncommon conversations even with yourself while you're in the common place you gotta you gotta start looking at you gotta looking at common house you gotta walk around that common house and have the nerve to get the most exotic most exquisite furnishing magazines that you can find and tear them out and start pacing them on the wall that you're living out and say I might be in a common place but I don't have common taste. My taste is bigger than the place I am. And the moment my conversation changes, the whole landscape and the whole scenery of my life is about to change. I need you to praise God right now if you could really hear the opening of some doors in the spirit. Things that were closed to you previously. The Lord says, I am getting ready to open them for you. The angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them out now this is powerful to me because ladies and gentlemen it shows me the power of God's will concerning my life it is never a matter of the devil having the ability to do whatever he wants to do in your life when God gets ready to bring you out uh, no devil in hell can stop the power of God from coming wherever you are and getting you out. And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord brings them out at night and tells them to get up and go back to the temple and start preaching in the name of Jesus. Wait a minute. This, uh, this sounds a little off to me. Why? with the angels of the Lord come and deliver me and get me out of this and only to send me back to doing what I was doing that caused me to get into this in the first place oh my god it looked like that when the angel of the lord would open the door i would just say thank you so much for getting me out i'm never going to do that again i'm going back to my house i'm gonna ditch my dream i'm gonna ditch my agenda but the holy spirit came to you today because he wanted me to tell you it does not matter how difficult the process is right now it does not matter how many restrictions or confinements that are trying to uh, that are trying to restrict your life or your movement you got to get back to it. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, I got to get back to it. I got I, I to get back out there. I can't let one setback make me just sideline myself for the rest of my life. I got to get back out there. And the Bible says that the angel said, I'm delivering you not to go home. 
I'm delivering you so that you could go back to doing what God ordained you to do. And so they go back to the temple. The Bible says the next morning they are back in the temple and they are preaching and they are praising the name of God. And the Bible says that on the next morning, the religious folk, the high priest, got together everybody. They had formed the little council and they give the instruction and says, go down to the prison and get the prisoners, those Jesus people, and bring them to us so that we can can extract judgment upon them but when they get to the prison Peter and the apostles are gone and they come back and tell the high priest and say listen I went to the prison the guards are there the doors are there but Peter and the apostles are not there let me just give you a word uh, for somebody who's watching me now I want to prep you for the in inquiry that your enemies are gonna have that the devil is gonna have for you when they come back looking for you in that limited place in that common place I want you to be able to tell them hey you wasting your time because you will not find me where you left me oh my god i i feel like dancing myself i just thought of a few people that looked at me when i was in that common place and when i was in a place of lack and when i was in a place of loneliness locked away in anonymity nobody around me nobody to help me fight i was in there by myself but i want the devil to know i don't care where you thought you last left me you will not find me where you left me you ought to put that on the screen you ought to comment that say you ain't gonna find me where you left me I, last time you saw me I, I, I was living on low income housing next time you see me I'll be in the subdivision of my choice because when I serve God and when I obey God it doesn't matter where I started it doesn't matter what kind of limitations I've been under the God of heaven told me to pronounce to you that they will not find you where they left you just when people thought uh, that just when people think they can stop you and put an end to the streak you're on and just when people think they could remove the favor that's on your life you don't even recognize that the, when you come looking for me you're not going to find some poor pathetic person who was crying yeah you might have saw me crying when you left but God's getting ready to turn those tears into joy God's getting ready to turn everything around favorably for my life I need you to praise God right where you are if you believe they are not going to find you where they left you there are some people that wrote you off and say I could go back there in two years he's still gonna be in the same place I got news for you if you come back two years from now I'm gonna be at a whole nother level I'm gonna be in a whole nother income bracket I'm gonna have more property probably triple by then but my word to you is and I hope about a thousand of you can shout over that is that you will not find me where you left me. The Bible says that they go back and tell them that they are not there. What do you mean they are not there? We put them in the prison and they are not there. And just at that moment, somebody walks in the door and says, yeah, I remember those fellows you told not to preach in the name of Jesus, not to perform miracles, not to heal anybody. They say, yeah, that's the ones we are looking for right now. They says, well, you don't have to look any further because they are up the road and they are in the house of God. They are praising and magnifying the name of our God. Oh, there's somebody right now. I want to tell you that when God breaks you out of this limited cycle, that when God orders your releasing of a season that seemed like it was going to run way too long in your life, let me tell you, the first place you ought to run to is run to the house of God and say, God, I thank you. I never could have got out. See, only people shout that realize that the only reason you got out of that tight place was because God was on your side. I don't know what coach you're on. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I want to tell you that when God breaks you out, because today is a breakout for you. God's breaking you out of some limitations that you thought were always going to plague your life, the rest of your life. But when you get out of that, God says, I want you to go back to doing what I called you to do. And the Lord sent me to tell you that you got to get back out there. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I got to get back out there. 
I'm preaching to somebody who's gotten discouraged with the job market. Somebody who's watching me now who's starting to feel despondent and disturbed and depressed. I you say, I've been trying and I've been trying, but nobody's hiring. I don't see anything that I qualify for, but the Lord sent me with an anointing today to tell you to go back and look again. But I need you to get back out there i know you've taken a hit i know things look like uh, it's unfavorable right now but the lord sent me to announce to you that if you would get back out there something great is going to meet you and i'm going to fulfill a promise in your life but you got to get back out there i'm praying for you right now i need you to stretch your hands toward me because You've been wondering what the uproar is about in your life right now. It is because God has chosen to use your hands to do something that somebody is upset about right now. God chose Peter and the apostles to work miracles through their hands. And it drew to their life unwanted attention, but it drew to their life some unimaginable attacks. When God gets ready to use your hands, it's going to draw all the critics, all the antagonists. They're going to be looking at you and saying, what's so special about his hands? But if you had gone through what I had gone through, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be looking at me wishing you were me or wishing you had what I had. You'd be saying, God, I thank you that he survived everything he had gone through to have the power that he has in his hands. There's an anointing that is released over your life right now. Somebody who's watching me now, I wanna tell you that something major is going to end by nightfall. I speak under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and tell you that God's getting ready to open some doors, Peter, by nightfall. There's some openings. The, the locked door was only the trick of the enemy to see if he could use it as leverage against your belief system. But I tell you, under the power of God, you got to get back out there. I know you got discouraged. I'm not being insensitive. Sure, we've all been here and we took a few days, sat around, cried even, felt sorry for ourselves. But at some point, you got to get back out there. Peter could have decided, hey, I'm done with this jail stuff. Once I get out of this jail stuff, I'm done with all of this Jesus stuff. The Bible says as soon as the doors were open, they were right back in the house of God, preaching and teaching the word of God. Stretch your hands because I'm praying for you now. God's getting ready to give you a fresh zeal. And the fresh passion. Some of you are getting ready to pick that pen back up again. You got too many songs in you to just leave them in your head. You got too much content in your heart to not be writing the book now. Get back out there. Father, I speak now to every person who's literally thrown in the towel. Didn't even want to have conversation about it anymore. Figuring if I don't talk about it anymore, eventually it'll just get out of my head to the point that I totally dismiss the notion. But the Holy Spirit sent me to you today with four words. He says, tell them for me, son, they got to get back out there. You were meant to be a starter. Why you keep benching yourself thinking that somebody else should do it? Somebody else could be doing that. Could it be possible that you're the somebody who could be doing it yourself? So, Father, I speak to every person who thought that the last locked door was going to be the door that kept them confined for the rest of their life. But for every locked door, there are a thousand open doors yet before you. And so, God, I pray now that you would position them and present to them open doors like never before. People are going to call inquiring of their gift, of their skill, of their talent. But you had pushed everything to the side. But God's getting ready to create an opportunity for you to get back out there again. And it is done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You ought to praise God right wherever you are on this day. Because this is your sign. God says it's time for you to get back out there. Maybe you're watching me and you said, you said, Pastor, I need a church home. 
Matter of fact, I, I need Jesus Christ. I, I need to receive him as my Lord and my Savior. Truthfully, I felt just like that, like life was not going like I needed it to go. I was tired of seeing the cycle of repeated outcomes. So I thought, what the use? What's the use? Why, why keep attempting? Why keep daring to try this? It's because some of those common places that were surrounded with common people tried to convince you that you're just like us. But something in you never settled on the fact that you were just like everybody else. You were never meant to be common. You are a peculiar child of God. You are royal priesthood. And if you're watching today and God's speaking to you, I want you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Salvation is made under confession. All you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised this Jesus from the dead. And he's even now sitting on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. Right now, maybe you're backsliding. You walked away from God. You were, you got out as soon as that door opened. You got out and you said, I'm, I'm going off the scene. But you got to do like Peter and say, now that I'm out, I'm going to be on the scene harder now. If they thought that last thing shut me down, I'm coming back with a vengeance. God's ready for you. Or, or maybe you're watching and said, Pastor, I need, a, I need a church home. In fact, I've already prayed about it and the Holy Spirit said, this is the church that me and my family are supposed to be connected to. Uh, whether that is in physical form when the doors are open, whether that is through the cyber sanctuary. But you know, God has told you this is where you to be planted. And if you are, fall on the end of these categories, uh, the email is right here at the bottom of the screen. I want you to email us and send us your contact information. Our amazing staff are going to further assist you and help facilitate uh, your next steps in salvation. I am excited, excited, excited about it. Praise God one more time for salvation, would you? Hallelujah. Well, it's giving time in the house of the Lord. And, and when I say the house of the Lord, of course, I mean globally around the world. He is not limited uh, to simply the four walls uh, of this sanctuary. And certainly our membership is not limited uh, to the four walls of this sanctuary. Uh, even through the pandemic, God has still been adding to the church. And we have members and partners that span uh, the country and even the globe, uh, some who are out of the country who have partnered with this ministry. And for that, we are so appreciative of you. As you are preparing your tithe on this Sunday, a tenth is what the Lord requires that we bring to him. The Bible says that we shouldn't touch it or tamper with it. It's the sanctified, it's the holy part, and that belongs to God. I tell people all the time, you can do more to bless 10% than you'll ever do with a curse 100%. When you obey God and honor God with the tithe, God blesses you. Your family is dependent on you being obedient with the 10. Your, your business is dependent, not on customers. It's dependent on your ability to be obedient with your finances. When you submit and surrender your finances unto God, which simply means that I honor him, I obey him with the tent, then God protects and God provides everything that we need. So I want you to prepare uh, the Lord's tithe. Uh, all the giving means are right here at the bottom of the screen. As we are preparing to sow into the house of the Lord today, I, I believe just in my heart that as we are believing God, for great and supernatural miracles and blessings that when we sow it just triggers something supernaturally to happen in the earth realm heaven responds isaiah says that god will send rain for seed which means that whenever heaven sees seed it has to respond by sending rain now there there are people who are watching me now and i only i only literally need maybe about 500 of you that would sow a $70 offering into the work of the ministry on this day. I know it's not a large amount. It doesn't take a large amount. It just takes everybody that would obey the voice of God, that you know you have it. You don't just have it uh, for no reason. You have it to be obedient and to respond when God requires something out of you. That is the purpose of having excess so that when I hear God requires something, I can respond to it. So I need at least 500 of you that say, Pastor, I will be one of those that will make a kingdom investment of at least $70 this day. 
I want you to do it. All the giving means are right there. Choose whichever one is the most convenient for you. If you don't have that 70, which I suspect a lot of you do, I just sense the spirit of liberality and God's getting ready to bless you through your giving. But if you don't have that, I want as many of you to strive to get that corporate seed in your uh, into the ground, that $42 seed. I want you to do that. Many of you have already purposed that in your heart to do it. So I want you to carry through with that. I want you to obey God with that. And then there are those of us, it's those of you who may not have that either. But you say, Bishop, I'm going to give the very best seed that I have. And I want you to know God will honor it and God will prosper it. Give your seed now and watch the heavens open over your life. Keep giving. God's going to prosper you like never before. Family, did you not enjoy the Lord on today? I know service was just amazing. I know that word was designed especially for you. Let's not forget to sow into the man of God's life, Bishop Henry Bolton. He's been delivering a powerful word of encouragement to uplift us every week. And let's not forget to sow into his life. It's easy to do. You can go to his cash app at dollar sign Henry W. Bolden 3. Yeah, that's it. He dollar sign Henry W. Bolden 3. Or you can go to his personal website at henrybolden.com. So go ahead and sow a good seed into the man of God's life. God bless you. Well, can you believe it? Our time has come and gone. I really don't have much left to say, except maybe you have some homework this weekend. That is, get back out there. Get back in the race of life. Get back to what it was God was calling you to do in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the backlash from people who didn't want you to do it. Get back out there and watch God prosper you in everything you do. I am out of time. Listen, don't forget to connect with us on all of our social media platforms. Don't forget to follow me. Go to YouTube, uh, Henry W. Bolden. Don't forget to check out my website, uh, henrybolden.com and uh, stay connected. There is a blessing in connection. Uh, I want you to stay tuned. Don't touch that dial or just shut that device down. Immediately following me right here on New Home TV is none other than the dynamic Bishop Samuel R. Blakes. I will see you on next time. Hi, this is Henry Bolden. Listen, I've got some amazing news for you. That's right. The Leaders Lab, the virtual edition is happening Saturday, October the 17th. Yes, uh, we found a new innovative way to do it. Of course, uh, while being in the pandemic, uh, we had to be creative and we found a way to do it. Those of you who've been asking, uh, will we have the Leaders Lab? Absolutely, it's going to be a virtual presentation. Uh, but I need every one of you to register. Registration is open now. All you have to do is go to Eventbrite, uh, the Leaders Lab, and you can register now. Early registration is underway right now. Uh, registration is only $49. That's right, for our, our hours of content, hours of impartation that I'm going to be pouring into your life. Uh, who needs to be a part of this Leaders Lab? I'm glad you asked. Uh, is it just for leaders? No. It's for actual leaders as well as for aspiring leaders, those who have a sense God has given you a glimpse of what your future is going to look like and uh, you are making the necessary investment now uh, to invest in yourself and expose yourself to the strategies, the techniques, the tools necessary uh, to have maximum success in life. This is not just a leadership that is applicable uh, for church or church leadership. It will help you, those of you who are entrepreneurs, uh, bring your business partners, bring your investment team, bring your inner circle, bring as many people as you can into this virtual Leaders Lab, but I need you to register right now. Listen, new home, I need you to show up. I need my family uh, to help me uh, make this the massive success that I know it's going to be, all right? Success has a formula, and I wanna be the one that shows it to you. I'll see you here at the Leaders.